The term divide and conquer was first proposed by Dr. Howard Gimbel, which changed the face of paper emulsification. Be it the four quadrant divide conquer, horizontal or vertical chopping, one thing in common is they create a cleavage plane that allows the surgeon to disassemble the nucleus into smaller fragments. Using moderate flow, low phaco power, and low vacuum, begin the sculpting of the groove. Start the groove at the proximal margin of the capsular axis. Carry the groove across to the distal margin. The width of the trench should be one and a half size the phaco tip for the phaco tip to make the trench easily. Use phaco power only as you sculpt forward to reduce phaco time and energy released in the anterior chamber. Rotate the nucleus either 90 degrees or 180 degrees and create the second groove or the parallel groove. Make sure that you do not leave a mode of unsculpted nucleus at the intersection of the groove. As in this case, 180 degree is sculpted first and the perpendicular one is complete later on to create a cross pattern. Make sure that the glow is seen posteriorly at the base of the nucleus. Proper placement of cracking instrument, be it the spatula or the phaco probe at the base of the screw is critical to success in the maneuver of cracking. With the phaco in irrigation only, the tip and the cracking instrument should be placed at the base of the groove. Separation of the instruments results in bidirectional force at the base of the groove and the nuclear fracture. Placement of the phaco tip along anterior margin of the groove results only in compression rather than separation and fracture of the posterior nucleus. Spread apart and gently lift the edges of the groove until the crack is seen posteriorly in the nuclear. In phaco tube mode, a high flow vacuum level engages the nucleus quadrant distal to the intersection of the groove. Impale the quadrant, wait for a moment for the vacuum to increase and then draw the quadrant to the center of the pupillary plane and begin emulsification. Always make sure that the probe is in the center of the pupillary plane. Rotate the nucleus in whichever direction is comfortable and go for the next quadrant. Don't go emulsify into the nucleus or go superficially. Then the hold on the nuclear quadrant will be lost as you can see in this case. Wait for the vacuum to build up and then use phaco energy for the nucleus to come into your probe. Use the second instrument to bring the fragmented nucleus towards the phaco probe instead of going and searching and running behind the nucleus. Make sure that you have sufficient space from the corneal endothelium to the phaco probe. If the nuclear fragment is large and too big to be emulsified, it can also be broken down into smaller fragments and then emulsified. Once all the nuclear quadrant are emulsified, Switch to FACO 3 or the epinucleus mode with moderate flow and vacuum and low power to emulsify the nuclear sheet. This provides maximal control of the chamber volume and depth and protects the posterior capsule at the conclusion of the procedure. Bimanual irrigation and aspiration is done where the irrigation is kept on one side of the side port and the aspiration of the cortex starts quadrant by quadrant. The aspirating port should always be facing upwards. When you finish aspirating one half of the cortex, the best thing is you can always shift your hands. Before that, I do a little bit of epithelial wash to prevent capsular phimosis. Subincisional cortex aspiration is very easy with bimanual aspiration. Foldable intraocular lens placement is done with irrigation on one side. The leading haptic is made sure that it goes under the capsular margin. The trailing haptic is kept over the iris with a constant irrigation flow. I follow three D's. 
drag the lens, depress it and dial it. It goes into the bag. The dragging of the lens is to make sure that the optic haptic junction comes away from the capsular margin. The depress is to make sure that it goes under the margin and then when you dial the lens, it goes into the bag. Before hydrating the ports, I loosen the speculum a bit and then start hydrating the sides of the main incision and the roof of the main incision and then go to both the sides of the side ports. I always give a constant irrigating flow so that while I come out it doesn't collapse the anterior chamber.